Welcome to this week's Movie Math, where audiences were more interested in making anti batfleck memes than seeing any of the current movies in theaters. In fact, interest in the weekend's three new picks was so low that the butler was easily able to hold on to the number one spot for the second week in a row, just as where the Millers was able to hold on to the number two spot for the third week in a row. Both picks fell an impressive 30 and 25 percent respectively, allowing the butler to follow in the footsteps of the help, which went all the way to the Oscars. Well, where the Millers is tantalizingly close to crossing the century mark, and should do so within the next day or so. At this rate, the raunchy comedy will certainly outpace the flick that inspired it, Horrible Bosses, and not only give Jennifer Aniston a much-needed win on her wildly uneven box office track record, but also validate Jason Sudeikis' recent decision to leave Saturday Night Live. Where the Millers is also a nice feather in Warner Brothers' cap alongside The Conjuring as two relatively small-budget picks that have shown great legs at the box office, flying directly in the face of Hollywood's current mantra that you need to spend a lot of money to make a lot of money. However, I would put an asterisk there, as it seems if you want to make an obscene amount of money, you do need to spend an obscene amount of money, meaning that the Billion Dollar Club is still for high rollers only. I wonder what it will take to change that, or if it's even possible for a low-budget pick to join those ranks. As for the new kids on the block, Mortal Instruments was yet another swing and a miss for the young adult film adaptation marketplace, debuting in third place in the same sad ballpark as the host and Beautiful Creatures. This could potentially cause Sony to pull the plug on the sequel they've already greenlit, and marks the second young star to be DOA after Liam Hemsworth last weekend. Interestingly, both Lily and Liam owe their careers to nepotism, at least to some degree, proving that Hollywood is not immune to the universal rule that not everyone thinks your kids or kin are as cute as you do. Then fourth place saw the debut of The World's End, the highest stateside debut yet for the Cornetto trilogy, yet unfortunately shows no real progress for its creative trio at the box office. Even in their native UK, The World's End is trailing far behind Hot Fuzz. With Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Wright was allowed to cast talent that best fit with his directorial tone, but now that he's four films into his career and still unable to shake things up, Marvel would be smart to pair him with a big star for Ant-Man if they don't want history to repeat itself for the fifth time in a row. But sometimes, even when talent tries its hardest, a franchise is unable to course correct. Take Kick-Ass 2, which after a disappointing debut last weekend, was cut down by almost 70% in its second weekend, falling to number 10. Mark Miller and company had hoped the sequel would bitch slap all the naysayers of the first flick, but instead are left looking as stupid as someone wearing a superhero costume in real life. And full disclaimer, Comic-Con is not real life. Sure, it's a magical place where magical things happen, but if you think the same rules apply there as they do the rest of the year, you're going to get burned, as so many studios do. As for the rest of the box office, Year Next was hardly the hit Lionsgate hoped it would be. That's most likely because horror gurus Jason Blum and James Wan are dominating the market right now, both with quality and quantity. There simply doesn't seem to be room for anyone else. And Blue Jasmine continues to bloom at the box office, expanding its run by over a thousand theaters and enjoying an almost 90% surge. Could Woody have another Oscar contender here, a la his last summer hit, Midnight in Paris? But while there wasn't a lot of great news in this week's top 10, there were still some impressive headlines being generated by the overall box office. First off, Despicable Me 2 has become the most successful animated film of 2013, passing the 800 million mark worldwide. That's like a dollar per million. Universal already has announced that the sequel is its most profitable film in history, and its second highest grossing film after Jurassic Park. Speaking of number twos, this haul makes Despicable Me 2 the second highest grossing film of 2013 overall after Iron Man 3. And speaking of Iron Man 3, this past week it helped Disney pass the two billion mark worldwide, which the studio has now done four years in a row. They're raking in so much cash they can burn money. And as the industry trades have been quick to point out, Disney still has Thor The Dark World and Frozen left on their slate. That's right, they've got three billion in their sights. If not this year, soon. As for this coming weekend, One Direction practically has a number one debut being served up to them on a platter, although they aren't expected to pack theaters a la Miley, Justin, and Michael. And that's the weekend box office. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching, and hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.